So what are palindromic numbers? These are numbers that stay the same when the digits are reversed. For example, the number 245,542 is a palindromic number. If we read the digits from the left, they are 245542, and if we read them from the right, they are also 245542. Another example of a palindromic number is 767. This number also remains the same if the digits are reversed. And do you know that all the one-digit numbers are also palindromes? For example, we can say that number 5 is a palindrome. Now, I will write for you the list of the first few palindromic numbers. The list starts with 0 and then includes all the one-digit numbers from 1 to 9. Then we have 9 two-digit palindromic numbers. Then the list continues indefinitely. A recent proof done in mathematics shows that we can take any positive integer and we can write it as a sum of three palindromic numbers. For example, we can write the number 346 as 11 plus 22 plus 313. As you see, all these three numbers represent palindromes. We can also represent 346 as 343 plus 3 and plus 0. These three numbers also represent palindromes. The number 170 can be represented as 5 plus 121 plus 44. Or it could be represented as 66 plus 101 plus 3. Or 161 plus 9 plus 0. As you see, each of these numbers can be represented by a different group of palindromic numbers. Number 12 can be represented as 11 plus 1 plus 0 or it could be represented as 5 plus 5 plus 2. And these are just two ways we can represent number 12 using palindromic numbers. Another interesting thing about palindromes is that we can take a number, for example, number 125, then we reverse the digits to get 521, and now if we add these two numbers, we will get a palindrome, and this will be 646. This process is called the reverse and add process. Now I will try another number, for example 129. If we reverse it, we get 921. Now let's add the digits. From the right we will have 0, then 5, and 1 plus 9 is 10. As you see, 1050 is not a palindrome, but let's repeat the process by reversing 1050. So we have 1050, and if we reverse it, we get 0, 5, 0, 1, and now let's add these two numbers. The result will be 1551. So in this example, after two steps, we got a palindrome. Now, let's see one more example. I will choose a random number, for example, 59. And now if we reverse it, we will have 95. The result will be 154. So far, this sum did not produce a palindrome. Therefore, let's take 154 and add 451. The result here will be 600. So, we still don't have a palindrome, therefore let's continue with the same steps. We will take 605 and we will reverse it and get 506 and now let's add. Now the result will be 1111 and this number represents a palindrome. So, as you see in the first example, we got a palindrome after the first step. 
In the second example, we had to repeat the process twice, and in the third example, we had to repeat the same steps three times. So, while some numbers produce palindromes quickly, with other numbers the process needs to be repeated multiple times. And with some of the numbers, the mathematicians could not find a palindrome even after thousands and thousands of steps. One such number is 196. A big effort was made over multiple years to find a palindrome by completing so many steps and producing numbers with 1 billion digits, yet no palindrome was found. Now, a literal number is a number that cannot produce a palindrome, and we can say that the number 196 is a good candidate for a literal number. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and thank you for watching.